Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we're going to be doing an oil change and filter and reset the maintenance reminder light on this 2013 Toyota Tacoma. Now as you'll notice this is where the filter is located and down on the very bottom over here there's a very small hole that we drain the oil into a little container. Down underneath the, uh, the bottom underneath here, there's, you see that little drain hole right down inside there? What happens is the uh, when you take this filter off, the, the oil is going to run down into here and it's going to drip out down the bottom. Down underneath the bottom here, there's a little tiny cap like this. You take this cap off and then what you do is you, uh, what I always do is cut down a oil container like this and you hold it underneath the bottom right here and then you take that filter off. So. Um, let me uh, loosen that filter up and I'll show you how to do it. All right, different kind of um, tools you can use to take the oil filter off. You can use this kind here, which is a cap which just goes over the top of it like this. And then you loosen the filter and you take it out. Uh, I kind of like this one here a little bit better because it digs in to the filter and it pulls it off without problem. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to loosen the filter just a little bit so we can turn it off by hand and then we're going to go underneath there with that um, cut down oil container to catch the oil. So now what I did is I loosened the filter up and I'm going to go underneath here with this container and I'm going to hold it underneath there and I'm going to screw the filter. And I'm going to screw the filter. Obviously you're going to lose all the oil that was in the filter. It's going to come out. So if you just hold underneath there the container, you can catch all of the oil so it doesn't run down all over the hoses and down all over the uh, bottom of the vehicle and make a mess for you. When the apple stops dripping, you put your cap back on. Take out the oil that you took out. That would have been all over the bottom of the engine and dripping all over the place. So uh, we're going to uh, get the new filter and we'll put that on. And you put a little bit of oil on the top of the new uh, gasket so you don't have a problem. I'm going to add one more thing too. Um, whenever you do these oil changes, be very careful because a lot of times this O-ring on here sometimes this O-ring when you take the filter off sometimes this O-ring stays on top of the housing over here if it does stay on top of the housing you have to take this O-ring off and we're going to throw it away we don't need it because the new filter comes with the new O-ring in it Put the filter on. We're going to screw it on. Put a little bit of oil on here so that it's uh, so that it's actually uh, lubricated. Screw it on by hand as tight as you can. And as long as you make it as tight as you possibly can by hand, you'll be in good shape. You don't have to worry about uh, tightening it up with a tool or anything. Just make it as tight as you possibly can by hand, and you're all set. Uh, okay. Now that we got the truck up in the air. Underneath the uh, center of the truck, it's fairly easy. Uh, when you look underneath here, you'll notice that this is your transmission over here in the back. Uh, this is your front axle over here. And this is your oil pan right here. And this is the oil drain plug. It's a 14-millimeter uh, plug in the bottom of the pan. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to loosen it up, take it out, and we'll let it drain out. Remember, it's uh, counterclockwise to remove it, clockwise to put it on. So you just use a ratchet to break it loose. And this is a normal ratchet. It's just, I like the ratchet that's got the flexible head because it gives you a little bit of clearance when you try to get into tight spots. So it's you know, just a regular ratchet with a 14 millimeter socket. Uh, obviously, you're going to drain it into a bucket. You're, uh, you're going to remove your oil drain plug. And uh, we'll let it thoroughly drain out. 
all right? Um, a good word of advice too is whenever you're working with any kind of oil or anything like that, wear yourself a pair of rubber gloves. Um, they say that this oil is no good for you, supposedly is bad for your, for your skin, dries it out, causes cancer and all that kind of stuff. So uh, be careful, wear a set of gloves. Much easier to take the gloves off and throw them away than to try to clean this stuff off your skin. So uh, we're going to let this drain out a little bit. And um, once it finishes draining, we're going to come back, we're going to put the plug in, and then we're going to lower it down and uh, put the oil in. Now that the oil is finished draining out, we're going to put the drain plug back in. You don't, put the, you don't screw the plug in with the ratchet, you screw it in by hand, all the way up as tight as you possibly can get it up there, and then you use the ratchet to, uh, to tighten it up to make it snug. Remember, you don't want to strip out the pan, it's a fairly small nut. You just go in there and go a little bit more to snug it up. Wipe all your excess oil off of it. And uh, that's it, you're all set. So let me uh, lower it down and we're going to put the oil in it and we'll get this, get this car, uh, this truck wrapped up. We got the truck back down on the ground. This is where your motor oil is going to go in. Um, you always have to make sure you use the correct motor oil. Uh, in this particular case, this calls for a uh, uh, 5W30 motor oil. Um, it, most of the time, most of the time, it's always on the uh, oil cap itself. What weight of oil you need? Always make sure you follow the recommended. Whatever's recommended by the manufacturer. Um, so they're going to put in 530 um, motor oil, and I looked it up on the computer. This one calls for 5.5 quarts. You could look it up on your owner's manual. The owner's manual will tell you the same thing. And if you're not sure, uh, just put in a couple of quarts, four or five quarts, and then you uh, put the cap back on and you'll start it up and you can just make sure. So uh, let's get some oil in this and uh, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. Once you got your, uh, your oil in there, we're going to uh, take the, uh, the oil cap, put the oil cap on, and we're going to start the vehicle up. Make sure you put your cap back on the car, the truck in this case. Make sure it's tight, and then we'll, uh, we'll start it up and let the oil circulate. Have the vehicle running, you let it sit for just a minute, and we're going to pull the dipstick out and we're going to check to make sure that the oil level is full. And this particular dipstick is on this side over here. What you do is you take the stick out, you wipe the stick down, and then we'll put it back in, push it all the way down as far as it goes. You pull it out, and then we'll check and make sure that it's full right to the, to the full mark, which it is, it's right to the full mark. So uh, that's it. We're all set. So you did your oil, you filter, and uh, the only thing remaining left to do now is to uh, just check and make sure that you don't have any uh, any leaks anywhere. So what you want to do is you want to just take a look down at the oil filter in particular, because I've seen them already where they leak a little bit. So and it's nice and dry. All right. Then you take a peek underneath the truck, make sure there's no leaks. And that's it, you're all set. Your oil change is complete, and uh, that's it. Right. And we're gonna reset the oil maintenance light. Um, you wanna make sure you, when you shut it off, you have the, uh, the truck on the, uh, not the trip, but you wanna have it on the odometer setting. All right? when you have it on the odometer setting, you turn the key and the ignition back off, and then what you do is you press and hold the odometer reset button in, and you turn the key on at the same time and it'll, uh, and that's how you reset it. So you press the trip button in, turn the key on, and you see the lines start to blink down. When they blink all the way down to all zeros, then you're, you're reset. That's it. Fairly simple when you know what you're doing. All right, let me just show you one more time. Make sure you have your odometer set, not on trip A or trip B. Make sure it's set to the odometer itself. You shut the key off on the odometer with the odometer still on. 
then you press and hold the uh, reset button right here in you hold the button in and then you turn the key to the on position and you'll see those lines start to blink down and then when they blink all the way down to zeros that's it you reset to 100 percent all right thanks for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one